Enemy of the state. An enemy of the state. Enemy of the state. Dank Podstash. You're listening to Enemy of the State's Dank Podstash. Visit thedankpodstash.com where you'll find our shop, calendar of events, and more. Become a patron or bitbacker and join us in our private Discord server where you'll have access to live shows and post-show Q&As. Business owners, you can advertise on the Dank Podstash, reach a larger audience, and make more sales. Just email us at dankpodstash at gmail.com for more details. Sweet. Well, welcome, fellow enemies of the state, to episode 29 of Enemy of the State's Dank Podstash. If you're on Facebook watching, we are live. Uh, if you're on Discord, we're in there too um, with a live chat, which you can see on that beautiful overlay. And if you notice, that's not David sitting next to me there. That's Hody Johns. David is sick, but Hody half is handsome, half is <laughs> smart. Three times is annoying. <laughs> hey, 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 come on now. No, we're, we're very, very grateful for you stepping in to help uh, co-host today. Because like I said, David's still not feeling great. And it's going to be a good episode. And there's some stuff that we've talked about in this episode today. So let me run through real quick some of the stuff we got to talk about. First of all, this is on anarchist networking. That's what we're going to be talking about today. Networking in a variety of ways. Um, might get a little deep. We talked about that before. Uh, and we'll also hit the surface stuff as well. Um, before we get started, though, this episode is sponsored by Anarcho Coffee. Anarcho Coffee has graciously agreed to sponsor this episode with the entirety of of their sponsorship money going to a fundraiser that we have going on right now. Um, this fundraiser is benefiting uh, our good friend Daniel Johnson, whose little boy had some issues in the hospital and they're just getting really screwed over by insurance and the medical system and all that. And they need about $7,000 that they have to put out of pocket to be able to pay everything off um, and keep their kid healthy. So we threw up a fundraiser um and the turnout has been amazing speaking of anarchist networking people have been sharing it and donating like crazy with the goal of seven thousand we're just now at four thousand three hundred and fifty that's awesome every one of you who shared commented and especially donated love it you guys are the best um if you want to find that you can find links on the enemy of the state's dank pod stash page and it's called coming together to help the dank meme family you can find them on my page, and I'm sure people have shared it around. There's lots of pages and whatnot. Um, let's see here. Yeah, uh, go there, help Daniel and his family out. That's great. And back to being sponsored by Anarcho Coffee. This is another example of anarchist networking. You know, you got to work with the people around you in the same community, right? Uh, help each other out, get the name out there, building an actual community. So check out Anarcho Coffee on Facebook, and I'm pretty sure anywhere else on media, any other social media, and their website is anarchocoffee.com. That's A-N-A-R-C-H-O-C-O-F-F-E-E.com. Uh, Anarcho Coffee is self-governed caffeine. Sweet. Sweet. Yeah, they have an uh, agorist aroma blend, which oh. is uh, you should definitely try out. So <laughs> he's even catering to us. He, he's uh, sponsoring and and getting the the name out there. So, and uh, you said so. If we buy from there, they're helping. They're helping Daniel a little bit as well. Um, I'm not sure of that. They might. I don't want to. I don't want to put okay. that on him. <laughs> but his uh, his let's not tie that to yeah. them. <laughs> his sponsorship. Uh, what we yeah. charge for an episode sponsorship is 100 percent going towards uh, Daniel's fundraiser, as well as if you join the Enemy of the State's Dank Podstash Patreon or Bitbacker, as co-host Hody here is a $5, $5 level patron, and we appreciate that very much, along with Adam Howard. Um, until the fundraiser meets its $7,000 goal, every cent of that is also going towards the fundraiser. Anything you buy from our shops, and you'll find those at thedankpodstash.com. 
Uh, every cent that we're bringing in until this fundraiser is met is going to that. So um, direct donations, obviously the best, but that is good as well. Sweet, sweet. Yeah, love, uh, love it. Looks like everything is uh, going well. I can't believe it's taken off to over four thousand dollars. It helps to be a meme troll. I thought they had no friends. <laughs> well, yeah, Daniel actually uh, said something about that. He's super appreciative of everybody that's helping him out, obviously. And he's like, man, I got to not be a dick to people. <laughs> but apparently <laughs> some of the stuff he's put out there has struck the right chord. So, <laughs> um, yeah, no, Daniel, and I are meeting up, uh, meeting up for some lunch in a couple weeks. And uh, I just got back from the vacay. So I'm looking forward to seeing him. You might see my uh, my usually porcelain white skin is now rosy red. Nice. So uh, this is how I rub in my vacation with everybody. Yeah. <laughs> Beautifully burned, not tanned. Love it. <laughs> yeah, impossible to happen. It's just not going to happen, guys. This is what you should see the, the you know my bald head. Oh, it's rough. <laughs> it's rough. Oh man, I'll be nice, shetty, and lepr leprosy esque in like three days. But yes. I'm glad we're recording. Today. <laughs> that is sexy. Um, yeah. So, anarchist networking. We've talked about this. I know you're doing some work with this. Um, I was mm -hmm. actually reached out to, and we talked about on the last episode too. So another little spiel here I want to go through. Uh, Shane Radliff from the Vanu podcast and Liberty Under Attack Publications has a great little networking thing going as well. Um, we have a referral uh, code. If you go over there, it's dank10. If you go to libertyunderattack.com. And it's a good place to go. Uh, there's books focusing on self-liberation, freedom strategies, solutions, and more. Uh, his current books are Hashtag Agora, Second Realm, Book on Strategy, Ben Stone's Sedition, Subversion, and Sabotage Field Manual Number 1, and Shane's very own Vanu, A Strategy for Self-Liberation. And on top of that, within the Anarchist Networking, they offer assistance to new authors through a publishing process with editing, proofreading, formatting for Kindle and paperback, and full service audio productions. So check out Liberty Under Attack Publications, share your story, find your freedom, and build the anarchist network. And we, we're talking right now too, uh, speaking of anarchist networking, we do a lot of it online, right? Uh, yeah, social media is hard to get unglued from. Uh, it, and uh, we, do, we do it, so a bunch of it through social media. But I think... I don't, I don't want to get down on social media too much. Obviously, uh, Zuckerberg has a certain feeling about uh, you and, and David on the reg. Yeah. But, um, <laughs> but, you know, and, and so it's hard to be under his rules. But at the same time, I think online is going to be a great tool, especially to overcome some of the problems that they would have had 100 years ago with trying to network. You would have had to kind of create a commune, yeah. whereas now you can really reach out online. And uh, that's that's where I've started my my kind of journey into I, I, what they call self-liberation that's where i've started yeah absolutely and there, yeah there's definitely nothing to knock about online the reason i just want had the idea to talk about anarchist networking is because we do so much online and you always see people complaining about nothing happening as far as real world solutions or real real world communities and whatnot but i don't think those people are necessarily looking close enough because we just saw pictures of you having a great time getting chocolate wasted on O'Doul's with a bunch of other people that you, a lot of which you <laughs> met online, right? Uh, absolutely. I know. Uh, now, see, that's the thing. Johnny Rocket, he's got a podcast. It's a cool podcast. You know, he's, a, he's an anarchist himself. Uh, and that's how I met him was just by fanboying out there. But in the past, I would just, you know, it's like, it's like listening to Rush Limbaugh 20 years ago. I mean, you're never going to talk to the guy. You're never going to know him. But we're in an era now I can actually like directly communicate with him. There's no directors. Messages go to him. And so, yeah, we just developed a kind of a minor friendship. But he thought it was funny enough to, to ask to bring to a wedding. To his uh, disappointment, I accepted that invitation. <laughs> and we just had a total blast at that wedding. It was a lot of fun. I could uh, Any pictures that you've seen, it only captures a little bit of how fun it was. There was 
jokes to be had and yeah, 90% anarchists and 100% fun. And Odul's, uh, let me tell you, for a guy who gets a little tipsy on two aspirin, uh, the Odul's was was really hitting me. Nice. Nice. Well, see, and there you go. And there was probably networking from person to person there talking about all kinds of stuff. And we at the Podstash, you know, we, we do a lot of this, what we're doing right now, you know, uh, remote speaking to each other and putting that stuff out there. But episode 25, we had a uh, good friend, Jeremy, good friend of the show, Jeremy Harding, come to my house and do this and met him IRL, you know. And since then, he had his old Honda that was having problems and he was going to junk it. And I was asking him about it. He said, hey, do you want it? I was like, yeah, I'll take it. I can work on Hondas. Gave me a friggin' car, helping people out, you know. So now I'm working on that for a little summer cruiser. It's great. Wow, give it to waste management and help the state or give it to a friend and help that friend gain profit. That sounds uh, remarkably anarchist and networky. Exactly. <laughs> so it's things like that. That's awesome. Jeremy's a good dude. That was a cool episode. Yeah, that was yeah. a fun episode. He is a great dude. Uh, definitely an excellent person. But it's things like that. Um, and I think it's it's hard, too, because we all meet each other online, and we're so spread out. We're all over the country. So I'm always advocating, hey, come up to eastern Washington. And I make sure to specify eastern Washington because the west side is garbage. But it's beautiful there, but as far as politics, it's garbage. Um, and I want to get people closer. Uh, I thought the minimum wage in homelessness was going so well. Oh, yeah, definitely, and gun restrictions and whatnot, and... <laughs> You know I'm not for state solutions and all that, but they're trying to pass stuff out of King County, a bunch of different gun legislations. And uh, to their credit, the sheriffs over on this side have said, nah, we're not doing that. But the people around here, more importantly, are saying, nah, we're not doing that. Because like I've said many times, I live out here in the middle of nowhere in eastern Washington, Um I'm on satellite internet and whatnot, and I don't see cops where I am. There are no cops. There's like one cop for this entire portion of the county. Never see a cop. The dispatch is handled by volunteers, which I wish they wouldn't volunteer for, but it is what it is. And the community I'm around, well, not uh, a bunch of anarchists that I'm aware of, and I don't even think they call themselves libertarians, are actually very focused that way as far as their viewpoints they're not interested in any of that legislation they're not interested in any state interference in any way everybody just wants to live their lives and do what they do and you know sorry got a dog in here go on bud go on and uh <laughs> and uh just you're right your dog's breaking the rules he's a true anarchist you know, good boy anarcho doggo but uh they just want to live by their own rules and help each other out. There's a great community food pantry out here that helps people who need it. And it's even hosting a kind of almost agorist market place there every once in a while, like once a month, there's people that have their homemade stuff, uh, homegrown stuff, and they have a little marketplace down in the basement there. There's only a couple people who insist on charging tax, which I'm hoping to oust out of there, but it's a really cool thing. So the importance here being having a community around you for a myriad of different reasons of not only supporting each other through networking financially and whatnot, but one of my favorite things, um, I don't, I don't remember is it was a little picture of people marching with a banner, um, about demanding safe streets and building stronger communities by getting rid of police. And that's one of the shirts. It inspired me to make a shirt that's on the Dank Podstash thread list that says, uh, demand safe streets, disband the police. And you can do that if you provide security with your neighbors for your local area. That's huge. That's one of the most important things in my opinion. Uh, up here, there's only four or five neighbors around me in our little neighborhood and we all watch out for each other. If any vehicle comes through that we don't know and it's looking fishy. We let everybody know. Everybody has dogs, so you hear when something funky's coming through. It's important. Yeah, you're flying through so many things that I'd like love to expound on. But Go like that it. last one, absolutely. <laughs> the the idea, I think, the problem with anarchies of the past is we've had 
problems defending ourselves. And a lot of that, and we've discussed this on the show before, is because they were morally opposed to making a contract where you say, I get back, you know, any type of contract where I, I get your back, you get mine. Mm-hmm. Um, any type of agreement was kind of frowned upon. And I think you and I are in the same, of the same mindset that you can have moral issues with it, but your anarchy is not really going to last it unless you, you have people that get each other's backs. Because there's outside forces, you know, I, I, I don't know if our conversion rate is going to get to 100% over the globe. And so you're going to have outside forces. And I think the best way to do this is instead of just saying, oh, every man for himself, you, you develop that network in that community. Like you said, we get each other's backs. Um, I know he's in a little trouble right now, but that was what the Schaefer Cox issue was, as you say. You know, he developed a militia that's and and militias, you know, oh, scary. Oh, no, a military. Well, it's really just, hey, neighbor, if you see somebody bust into my house, can you do something about it? And if I see somebody bust into your house, I'm going to do something about it. Okay. Okay. I mean, that's what, and and you might say, oh, that sounds difficult to construct. But I mean, this is what natives and cavemen were doing well before the written language. Yeah. So, you know, I mean, mean, it's really, for me, that's important because people see anarchy as defenselessness. And it is absolutely not, or sure. it doesn't have to be, I guess. You can be defenseless if you want to be stupid, but you don't have to. Yeah, absolutely. And going back to, you mentioned natives and cavemen, and I've been going down the evolutionary biology rabbit hole lately because it's super fascinating to me. Yeah. I love seeing uh, the origins of how human action was formed, like what caused us to do what we do. And I was going to lay out a very, you know, surface level anarchist networking idea of how we can do stuff in the modern world right now. And as I was listening to this stuff, I was like, man, it's so much deeper than that. You kind of got a life hack and figure out why you're biologically doing the things that you're doing, because we've been thrown into, you know, after the Industrial Revolution and the advent of technology, it's just a blip on the on the screen of the entire time that humans or early human ancestors have been around and we're not fully adapted to this kind of life yet. We're not uh, fully adapted even to technology yet. And you can see that with a lot of uh, depression and the way people are interacting with the world that it hasn't quite been figured out yet. So looking back through and seeing the way that people learned to group together and whatnot for their own protection is a really important thing because they say when the ancestors you know came out of the trees in the um disappearing rainforest areas and went to the savannah you think about it they're mostly apes at that point they're not anything nearly resembling a human and this is of course if you subscribe to uh you know evolution which i don't find anything wrong with but i know some people don't i think it's interesting and factual in my opinion but uh, i shouldn't have gone down that tangent anyways but anyways coming out of the trees it's factual in my opinion oh nick oh (laughs) nick (laughs) i'm I'm hard pressed to say that anything's a fact these days because i know there's so much that i don't know but when they came down out of the trees you know you got 50 or so ape-like beings with a fucking lion coming after them and what do they do yeah you either pile on it one by one run away who knows what it's coming it's grouping together learning how to throw rocks at it and whatnot that was able to drive predators away and keep the tribe together and going and strong and if you think if you look at it and this is was what was his name his name was uh william von hippel uh that i was listening to talk about this he says that grouping together is what helped us to advance to evolve forward because there wouldn't be any species if everything just got picked off one by one and wasn't working together and the same applies to today the state is the predator there's a lot of different kinds of predators out there and networking for safety as well as profit and whatever else is very important yeah you got coordination versus mandated coordination Mm -hmm. and i think that's where we just draw the line is we say hey we don't want anybody mandating this coordination but you're examining the biology. Uh, you can call it evolutionary biology. So funny, I actually don't subscribe to evolution. But I think the point still stands. You will die alone, you know, if you are up against a bigger predator. And let's face it, in the anarchist community, we're up against some bigger predators right mm-hmm. now. So banding together is very important. You know, it's uh, there are many cases of uh, ecosystems where the main predator could 
kill something, but it, but at, in mass, they just say, well, this is too annoying. A uh, good example is the bears with the bees. Mm -hmm. If you have enough bees, the bear will say, this is too many stings and I'm going to pass out and die. And so I am not going to go for these guys. The bear could like bar barrel through, but after a certain point, he just says, that's too much pain. Mm -hmm. And really as anarchists, that's kind of the point that we're at right now we're never going to be able to we're, we're not to the point where we can kill the bear but we can sting it enough to for the bears to say you know what i'm going to leave it alone i know in eastern washington you've talked about it that's kind of the situation that you've that you've got where they just say i mean you even have an elected sheriff out there who apparently is uh down with down with leaving you alone and and uh probably wants to keep his job yeah and so the sting of the bee would, would definitely impact him yeah absolutely because it's it's a different it's a different environment for me out here uh, coming from Arizona and being mostly in urban areas and then coming out to the country. It's a lot more independent people. It's a lot of spread out areas, but people still talk to each other. And the thing, if a sheriff or whoever was going to come mess with somebody, first of all, out by themselves on acreage, you never know what they have in the house. Um, with the population of hunters and a lot of militias and whatnot over here as well. And then if you have a whole, you know, 20 acre area with five acre parcels with that many people on there that can have line of sight of the roads and all of that, you're pretty much a sitting duck if you want to come out and mess with people. Yeah. Um, and, and so, so having the physical community is I think going to be the hardest one. And I know it's the hardest one for me. I'm, I'm a city slicker. I'm in the city right now. I, I am, I'll admit I'm white enough that I die without Walmart and, uh, <laughs> pretty, pretty quickly. And it's hard if you just say, you know, and, and so for me, and this is something I learned from you, it needs to become a slow detachment from the process. I think I'm going to get myself into a situation where I can move physically, but instead of going for this all or nothing, I'm trying to slowly remove the state's influence on my life or I, I live in a life where the state hardly influences me anyway I admit I'm a square I drank a diet soda once and that's probably the hardest drug I've ever had was the, whatever caffeine was in it uh, uh, <laughs> and I admit it but and so I'm aware that the state doesn't influence me socially very much but as far as economically it's hard you know Thoreau had this problem when he stopped paying his taxes and he said I don't want to sponsor a uh, war against mexico that it it seems i mean there's racist intonations but i mean i just don't want to sponsor a war mm -hmm. for more land when we already have plenty right here we can fit the whole population of the world and i'm not even kidding in the in the size of new zealand mm -hmm. uh and so that's perspective we don't need more land we need to use the land we have effectively but of course the easier option is to land grab and steal and he didn't want to support that anymore and so when he withdrew, of course, they arrested him. But I'm trying to find an, a way for me, my beginning is to avoid paying taxes. I'm just trying to say I'm going to at least be a non-feeder into the system of the state. And that's kind of what inspired my journey to, to contact the people that I have. Yeah, I'm glad you brought that up because that's uh, a great idea for everybody to do is to find within our anarchist network or even without, you know, outside of the anarchist network, because there's gray market transactions that happen all the time, even black market transactions that um, normal people who are not necessarily anarchists do, like a garage sale is a gray market transaction. You're supposed to pay taxes on your profits from a garage sale, but who does that? I don't think anybody does that. So if you, if you can find the businesses within your network that you can support that aren't supporting the state, do it. It's easier than you would think. And I guess let's, uh, you know, you've talked about your your situation. I'll just give you a brief glimpse into my situation. I've only started this a couple of weeks ago, but I'm a big meat eater. I'm a big steak eater. I love steak. Mm -hmm. And I managed to find, uh, you know, a, a rancher butcher who processed his own stuff on site. Now he's supposed to go through all these official channels, but it's impossible for the state to keep track of all the cattle that he has and he would much rather sell for a personal profit in himself he makes more money selling to me and i buy it for and i'm not even kidding easily like 70 percent of what it's sold for in stores oh, wow. and there's no state in between there's no sales tax it is going from cow to me 
directly. And so that's now I haven't made many more contacts than that. But for me, that's huge because that's food. Food is like a really hard place to, to say, well, I'm not going to go to a grocery store that is protected through all these government regulations that pays X amount of sales into the government that, does, you know, all, all these, you know, you just, you just support them by going there. And that's, for me, that's where I had to start was, well, what am I going to eat? And that's been a great contact for me. And so you don't necessarily say, well, which company is the least evil? What's their tax rate? You know, there, there's people that are eager to do it. I mean, these ranchers want to do this. Yeah. You just have to find one that's willing to stand up and say, well, I don't think I'm going to get caught. It's not like they have surveillance cameras on my, my barn. Right. Yeah. And, and that's super important. Your, your food supply, you know, your survival is one way to take it into your own hands. Um, growing a garden or doing like you're doing and supporting, uh, you know, meat producers in that way as well. Like that's how we get our eggs out here is just a person who has a bunch of chickens who has made their own awesome, very healthy blend of feed for them. And we get eggs from them all the time. Uh, we're, currently putting up a new fence on the spring garden hopefully a project uh that we'll be putting out there at some point and seeing if we can subsist completely on the vegetables grown and whatever else we grow in our garden and then meat that i take down myself up here through hunting and raising and whatnot like that and that's super important for self-liberation and that kind of goes with building your own internal network your network of you and family um i can't remember what you mentioned before you hit on something that reminded me of something we spoke about before the show which was not only did i go down the evolutionary biology rabbit hole in preparation for this show uh but i was also listening to some discussions on <laughs> on uh, zen and taoism buddhism in general and whatnot and it's important to know yourself and to be present in the moment and really look at yourself, look at your internal network, because what are you presenting if you're not feeling whole or happy or confident in yourself to people else, to other people out there, if you're not in harmony with your life. And so that is, Growing a garden and things like that can only help what you present to the world around you and being present in this moment and not constantly worrying about the future. Like, what if the state does this to me or the atrocities in the past and bringing that down, bringing you down from those? And that's not to say you don't think about that stuff, but being present in the moment and what you're doing and knowing that that's the right thing to do is very important, in my opinion. Totally agree. They talk about, uh, uh, I, w I was researching the fall of the state for a different podcast and I, I was using economists and these, these aren't statists, but one of the, or these are statists, you know, they're, they're, you know, big wig economists, but what they were saying was you stop believing in magic and that'll be one of the things that can help you survive it. Because I think when I picture, uh, <clears throat> steak maybe is your magic. I, mm -hmm. I don't, you know, you look at a cow, you don't know how to turn it into a steak. You have no idea, right? I, I barely have an idea. And I actually used to butcher them for Texas Roadhouse and mm -hmm. cut them up. But I, you know, even so it's like, well, somebody else is doing the skin. Somebody else is doing the killing part. Somebody else is draining the blood. Somebody, the fewer magic steps you have, the better off you're going to be. So you're talking about living in that present. When, the more things that you have that are just magic to you that are mystical you know all i do is i pay somebody twenty dollars and it turns into potatoes and and herbs and you know whatever it may be the fewer of those steps you have the better i'm not saying not to network i think we absolutely have to have a community i think in fact i would say that people that try to do all of these things on their own end up having a very low standard of living because it's hard to do all, I mean, com, make a computer, you know, mm -hmm. I, it, it, that, that's so hard, right? <laughs> you know, there's right. different metals and welding and, and you have to understand electricity and all these th different things you have to understand that make it very difficult to, to do that. But the fewer, but at least if you have an understanding of how it happens, you know who to network with and that takes the magic away. Then you stop believing what we're literally forgive me for getting kind of supernatural on this, but you're putting the state in this very godlike position of saying, I don't know. All I know is I pay this and I receive safety. All I know is I give up some social rights and I gain safety. I pay some money and I gain 
you know, farm subsidies. All I know is I, you know, what, whatever it may be, you know, you're, you're, you're putting them in a religious position of being your deity instead of having it be grounded in reality. David is sick today, but he did want to say, he chimed in on the Discord and said, uh, fa taxes feed the state, keeping money in the counter economy keeps it from the state, but you got to make an effort to keep it from going back into that regular economy. So if you need something, see if a fellow anarchist makes it, sells it or whatever. And if you can't find someone who does, then maybe think to do it yourself. And, and I think that that's a total agreement because it's not just what, I, you know, I'm in the process of, of buying things from anarchists. But I also want to sell to anarchists yes. as well. You know, if you have something to offer, you know, p please offer it up. And, and that way we, we keep our own system, our own economy and keep as much of it inside rather than outside. Yeah. Absolutely. Absolutely. Sorry, I'm checking the Discord here. You all can get in the Discord too if you if you message us on the Dank Pod stash or me or David and we'll send you an invite. It's pretty cool. Um, and you know there's a, there's some people out here speaking of buying from and other anarchists and helping out anarchists and stuff. Sometimes it's unavoidable with the current system to pay into it a little bit, you know. I don't have the means to make the t-shirts and whatnot that we sell on the pod stash myself yet, although I'm working on it. So we're going through threadless and people start screeching about that stuff. Just hardcore. So you're not a real anarchist. If you're first of all, selling t-shirts online, that's a weird thing to connect to not being a real anarchist, but going through a flagship company like that. And it's just like, you know, it's like you were saying before, taking steps to get there. Yeah. We've, we've all been coerced into the position we're in. I mean, please, you know, so we're, we're working on getting out of it. You're promoting a message. Yes, you have to use another story to do it. What's he wants you to hire all the people that sew things together buy the machine that puts the materials together, that threads it together. There's, there's thousands of these things that go into it. Um, Milton Freeman, of course, had the famous, you know, here's what goes into making a pencil discussion. Mm -hmm. That doesn't, that never becomes not true. You have to get those from all over the place. Now, the more anarchists we get into the network, which is probably why I think this is such an important subject, the easier that's going to be. I'm lucky that steak is pretty easy. Some guy killed it, drained it, and gives it to me. The, the pencil thing is not so easy. It, it's made from, from parts that are all over the globe. And so we need more people in this network. And I, for me, I'm heartbroken when I see kind of the true blue anarchists try to live it out. Um, I don't want to use her name, but but I know she had some issues lately and she uh, somebody within our community who is rather well known and she's kind of like begging right now. She lives almost a homeless lifestyle because she doesn't want to support the state in any way. And it breaks my heart because she is more true to her principles and philosophies than me and living a standard way below myself. And I know that she was actually a huge inspiration between why I decided to try and do this because not just for people like me, because apparently I'm more ready to sacrifice my values than she is, but for people like her that want to live their values and also don't deserve to live a life of just destitution. And I think that, that the more people we have in this community that can put these things together, that, that can, yes, maybe we don't get a guy who knows how to make all, you know, we don't get the whole network to make a computer in one day, right? Computers take, thousands of people from thousands of different places but we work on that step you know maybe find a guy who can decrease it a little bit you know you guys use threadless fine you're putting the message out there david's hope and I, having spoken with him personally is to do that himself one day but we need more people and that's not his fault that's just i mean in fact the message on his shirts is trying to get more people into the movement so that he can finally be able to produce within the community yeah and I fully respect pulling yourself completely out of everything so as not to even touch that, you know, the white market, the state taxation in any in any way. And my, my question there is, you know, how are you building up other people, though? You know, people see your story and whatnot, but without yourself being strong. And this is not a, a jab at her in any way either. Uh, it's just an interesting observation that you, you need to build that community because like we're saying, this is about anarchist networking community, no man's an island. And that's another thing that people, you know, re about all the time when you're talking about community, there's, or are you some sort of collectivist? 
It's like, dude, you're talking to me right now. We're friends on Facebook. We are in a community together. I don't know. I don't get it. It's weird. Well, and so, so, and it's funny, we're, we're talking about this next week, right? I believe that's the debate with Jack Neeson that I'll mm-hmm. have, and I'm going to take the capitalist side, but that's that social capital. And I say, how much have I invested in you and our friendship? I mean, we had a disagreement last night yeah, Friday, or, or yeah. yesterday. We, we, you know, Friday. Yeah. We, we talked about it on the discord. We were honest with each other. We said exactly how we felt, but your relationship with me and my relationship with you, I'm going to assume is so much more important than these little, than these little disagreements, Mm -hmm. right? You're going to have these little disagreements and I'm not saying that they're never important. Being philosophically sound is important. We're trying to create a community of more philosophically sound people. But if you place these small opinion disagreements over the value of something like love and friendship and understanding, you have a problem. Yeah. And so it, nobody, no community, no revolution. Um, uh, uh, we're libertarians. That's where I'm from. We did a series. Uh, we talked about nonviolent revolution. And there are common denominators with all of them. And one of the things that they all have was they were not based on this overthrow. I mean, look at France, how many times they tried to violently create create a difference versus when they just said, hey, here's how we can get it to fall apart nonviolently. That's the revolution that stuck. People take for granted. France had, I, I believe, 13 revolutions to America's mm-hmm. one. Now, of course, America's had a problem. Democracy's not the end goal. I get it. I get it. Right. We're just trying to move away from monarchy. Fine. OK, but. The problem, you know, the problem is, is that that they would just kept violently doing it. And so if we just incite violence, that's not good enough. I'm fine. Of course, I love the yellow vesters, the guillotine in front of the state building. That's just good, clean fun. But it, but at the same time, we're trying to this needs to be a movement about love. First and foremost, I have to want to do business with somebody in order for me to have any incentive to do business with them, you know, business with them at all. Otherwise, if I just find reasons to hate, 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 I'm going to go back to the state because I hate everybody in my own movement anyway. So what, you know, so what do I care if I support these guys versus these guys? You have to love your fellow anarchists. Absolutely. Absolutely. And not, you know, like you're saying, if it's all hate, 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 why not take the easier path? And you spoke earlier about not being able to avoid certain things. I mean, look at the hoops that people have to jump through to homeschool their own kids. You still have to go through so much state approval. And even then they, they're just, there's some, instances where they're so negligent and just bad at their job you've sent in all the right paperwork there's mothers getting arrested and children taken away even though they did everything right to go through the state so that's an an interesting side by side that we can build as well is you know these public services government services that like schooling police all that stuff i like the idea of rivaling those with private and now you're hamstrung though Because the state has a monopoly on these things and you have to pay in not only to them to be able to work alongside or work separately from them, but you're still getting taxes extracted. Um, They want to demand licensing fees, all this stuff uh, on top of to pay for their, you know, public schools. Like you pay property tax and that goes to schools, right? You don't have kids. You don't want to pay for other kids to go to school. You're going to be made to pay for it. You want to homeschool your kids, you're still paying for other people's kids to go to state mandated schools. And an interesting kind of side by side, like outside of the state system, uh, talking with my wife was the foster care system. And we know the foster care system is just absolute garbage. It just chews up these poor kids and spits them out. There's abuse, there's trafficking, all kinds of stuff. How awesome would it be to have a, you know, loving, peaceful you know, anarchist, anything outside of the state foster care system, things like this that we can work on. And that comes back down to community and it comes back down to evolutionary biology and hunter gatherers and all that stuff. It was all strong community and everybody took care of each other. It's possible to do. Now, the question we need to solve is how to break that chain that the state still has connected from their system to ours. I, I, I wish there were a singular answer for that. Uh, obviously, people differ on that. Uh, you love the uh, fighting statism with statism groups. Uh, we all know who we're talking about there. 
uh, but then you've got the the agoris, you know, the, the and that's that's my preference. That's why I initially fell in love and became a fanboy of the Enemy of the State po- podcast first was because I feel like that's the best way is to just say I'm either going to do it anyway and you're not going to catch me or you know, I'm just going to ignore it. <laughs> you know? yeah. uh, and that, for me, I think that's the best way to do it because that also garners public support, which I think we'll need. And if you say, you know, people say, well, that's, that's what I do. I like doing that, or, or I enjoyed that. Or, you know, if you provide a service that helps a lot of people, the government's not gonna come down on you. I, I mean, you look at, um, uh, you look at uh, uh, if, if, if it's unpopular, you look at uh, big businesses, that get all of these tax breaks, even though they shouldn't have it, but they provide the service and there'll be a, too much of a backlash if they don't. So we'll just let it go. You know, they're just willing to let their taxes go, Yeah. yeah. but they're not going to do that for you because, you know, you don't provide services for a lot of people. So I think we just need to make that pop- popular. Yeah. You talk about the foster care system. Every, yeah. That, that's something that, that, People say, well, what would we do if we can't mandate and steal kids from their from their parents if their parents aren't doing what we want them to do? Now, look, I'm aware that sometimes there's somebody that's being very abusive to their child and that requires intervention. And But the difference is, do you want the state doing it? Because there's a great TED Talk. Um, it's from Molly McGrath Tierney. Uh, if you haven't seen it, see it. If you're interested in foster care stuff at all, and you posted um, she the revolutionized well. the foster care system. I posted it in the Discord. Yeah, it, it, she revolutionized the po- foster care system in Baltimore by not taking kids away, by talking with the parents and help rehabbing them. Even if they were doing something negligent and stupid, the better option, the better option was to keep the kids with their families and rehab the parents instead of stealing the kids away. She found out, and and I mean, anarchists are gonna love this. She found this whole system of lawyers and doctors that were in cahoots with each other that would say, well, for uh, we need to grow. And so for us to grow, we need more kids. So they kept finding more and more excuses. She was one of the very few people who said, I'm not going to do that. That's wrong, that's morally wrong. And I don't care if it makes us less money next year. Because you know how state programs work, they use the money and so therefore they get the money for next year. So it's bad to have a to work under budget because if you do, you're not gonna get as much money as the next year. So she used like 10% of the money that she actually had to use and greatly improved the lives of these kids by, by not taking them away. I know I'm getting very sidetracked, but this is also something that we need to encourage with networking to find these people that are willing to say, hey, let's seek the best kind of help because that's what the market should do right find yeah. the best help you know the state is the easy help sending you know tearing families apart is the easy way the state will do that and they want to do it because they make money when they do that but you know we are looking for the best way and that's what the market is supposed to provide and so we want more people that are willing to provide that best way so if you see you know an anarchist that is that is maybe not living their best life reach out and help as opposed to throw them under the bus and call the state on them. We might not like what they're doing and I'm not going to defend. Look, I'm a square. All right. I don't, I don't do, I'm not going to do crack around my kids. I'm not going to, I don't want them in that environment. And yeah, maybe you responsibly crack or whatever. So, so, you know, whoever's judging you judge away, but, but the important thing is if I see it, my first instinct is not to call the cops on them. My first instinct is to get them help. And again, I guess that just comes back to the love thing. It even comes back to the biological thing. Do you experience that community or are you trying to live on an island? Yeah. And uh, figuring this stuff out, you know, the the state services that we want to parallel um, in a more peaceful and better way, uh, like you were just talking about the foster care system, schooling, um, security, all that stuff. And the question being, how do we do this without having to pay into the state still? It's something I bring up all the time is uh, mm-hmm. Bundy Ranch and people coming together from all over the country to have their back. Because I think the people that say, uh, myself included, that it's inevitable that you're going to have to defend yourself from the state if you're rivaling them in these services or even just trying to live outside of how they want you to live. It's inevitable in a lot of cases that they're going to come after you. So you can't just let people 
be eaten up by the state. It goes, once again, back to things we talked about before, gathering around each other and stopping them from doing that because we see that it effectively, very effectively worked with Bundy Ranch and then another prominent one that um, our friends over at the Voices of Voluntarism podcast covered in one of their episodes and in anarcho-journalism, uh, James and Leanne, shout out, was a attempted drug arrest, I believe in Chicago, where these two cops were going to arrest a guy that had drugs on him and the community gathered around, armed, and said, nah, man, that's not going to happen. Let him go. Even got the drugs back and chased the cops out of there. Because they're not hurting the anybody by having drugs. Yeah, <laughs> they, they took his product, you know. He's not hurting anybody. If you want to buy drugs, that's on you. Mm-hmm. And that's exactly, a, it's it's a great, at the, at the least, a backup strategy is for people to have your back in forceful self-defense, which is why we need to build these networks of people closer to us. And if possible, that's, that's the hardest thing too. Yeah. Yeah. Trying to get out to a different state. If there's a problem, like, I don't know. What if one day I went on Facebook live and was like, look, everybody, uh, I am barricaded in my house right now. The cops are around me. I need help. Like how hard would it be for everybody to get to where I am that wanted to help me? hard it's gripping fear and that's where we come to the that i the, and i think that's the hardest part is the physical location we are in an era especially with the internet i flatly reject that community should be based on location at all but unfortunately the state mandates that they say well this community is governed by these people and represented by these people and we it's it's sad because really if, if you think about what the market would do without the state it would say, oh, we've developed a tool that can get anything to anywhere in the world within a couple seconds. And, or, you know, I'm exaggerating, but you know what I mean? Within a day and you got these services. I mean, it's bringing us closer together, you know, my, 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 and even, well, I guess, and even the things all over the world to say that, well, we need plants here, here, and here to help connect, you know, so that we can speed up those processes. It's what the market tries to do. And then the state stops. And so you just say, I, I am trying to be more connected to people around me. It's hard to, to do the physical thing. I think for me, I really appeal. Um, who is the hostile hair guy? I forget his name. Nick Klein. Help me. I love him. Nick Klein. Uh, I love that episode because he, he's a good one for talking about this because he talked about that personal ecosystem that you develop at your house. And to say, hey, you can get, here's how you get meat and food and eggs and things like that going you know, and you don't need an outside influence. You don't need the state. Now that's kind of, I guess that's not, not necessarily something to bring up for networking because that's how you can make, get personally, you know, uh, you don't need anybody else to help you really with these things. I guess you, you got to buy a couple of 25 cent bunnies because there's too many of them and they'll go for free if you find the right place. But you know, how he develops that ecosystem to help you be personally free. But I think the hard part is that community. And it's something that I always sound like a communist and I'm a, I'm a straight up capitalist. Like I said, I'm going to rep the caps next week on this show. I love it. But the, it, it's hard because I come off sound like a communist because I feel like I just want to gather every anarchist together and just say, let's work together and protect each other. And I just, and maybe this is where I turn it into an open-ended thing. I love to talk like I'm an authority on the issue, but this is where I say, I just don't know the solution right now. How do I, I, I'm taking steps, but what's the end game here? Are we going to need to move to New Hampshire or Eastern Washington or Western Georgia or whatever? Let's take a look at uh, something from um, Konkin's New Libertarian Manifesto. And uh, he kind of takes you backwards from, um, from the Agora to our current level of statism and you see just freedom everywhere with small tiny pockets of statism and if you're going backwards through time those statism pockets are going to grow because what we're working on is shrinking them and how do we do that and i really like you said i think it's it's needing to be closer are we going to have to move to new hampshire here and there wherever it might have to be that way to realize this dream to realize this peaceful reality it it's gonna it takes sacrifice like i (laughs) i know the the uh, flag wavers always say freedom isn't free but they're not wrong on that it takes uh working together it takes work to put it in there and the the hard thing too is there's so many there's so many people in giant communities 
And if you look at things like Dunbar's number, you're only in your mind able to really truly know 150 names or people, right? So how do you manage hundreds of thousands of people working together? And that's the solution we're looking for is a non-government solution of doing that. The, the way that appeals to me quite a bit is that sweet spot, that 150 person number and communities. Because we, we, if, if there was no state, we say it's going to be panarchy because I don't have a problem with people living whatever anarchy hyphen they want to, as long as they're not hurting me or other people. I'll defend myself and other people will defend themselves. So you have pockets of different hyphenated mm-hmm. anarchy whatever some with no hyphenated anarchy and everyone can still communicate between those and work together without a giant force with a monopoly on violence and in imposing taxation it, it can definitely happen it happened for millions of years before this it can happen now yeah the i absolutely no problem i think the nice part i'm looking forward to the debate next week i'm a very strong capitalist i have very serious problems with mutualism but the nice part is i know that jack is not for coercive violence and he knows i'm not for coercive violence so we can have just a fun debate i mean it's intellectual don't get me wrong but we can have kind of a luxury a debate of luxury i guess where we're not at each other's throats and i don't have to be like you're gonna try to enslave me because we're just talking about what we would want personally and i want more ideas in that regard i've come to the idea of capitalism but even i mean you look at the difference between economic capitalists. I mean, there's, there's thousands, you know, capitalism is very basic. And so the, the, there, there's, I want people coming up with different ways to manage, you know, the problem is when we have a single state and a single way to manage something we want, I want more ideas. I want more management. You talk about that magic number being 150, every development cuts down that number a little bit you know, for that, for that standard of living that you need to, to have access to. And so I love machinery and tech and, and just that, that whole advancement. But at the same time, I don't want to live like I've never seen machinery and tech and advancement. And that's the tough balance that we have to do because that stuff, you know, the bigger it is, of course, the more the state wants a slice of it and they've grabbed slices of all of it. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. And that's the thing when you bring up that the Dunbar's number or hunter gatherers and how well these small societies worked, people are like, well, you're just giving up on technology. Then it's like, we can't give up on technology. Technology's here. It's here to stay. I don't think that having strong communities, you know, with very good interpersonal relationships and communication is going to just wipe out technology. First of all, it's not possible. Second of all, not many people want to live without it. Shout out Ann Prims. I know you want to. Buy a shirt. I have an Ann Prim shirt. It was printed with technology. But <laughs> <laughs> it's just not a thing that's going to happen. Sorry. It's it's like, right. uh, well, there's a question that's raised uh, from people asking you about anarchy all the time. Like, what about military? You know, people have nukes. And, you know, nukes are never going to go away. Um, that's why I'm not a fan of the violent revolution idea for anarchy because it just creates a power vacuum. It's not doing anything except for eliminating government in your area. There's other governments all over the place and they can easily just swoop in at that point because it's, it's better organized for what they want to do. Um, it's a, it's a change in heart. It's a change in human interaction, personal responsibility, all of that, that has to happen, not just going and shooting people. Yeah, well, and if you get the compound, ultimately, let's see, it's $100,000 for a missile that can wipe it out. So you just say, as soon as we're $100,000 worth of annoying, they're just going <laughs> to blow us up. So it's, you know, so the idea is if you do try to engage in that violence, you're going to, you have a very tactical problem to begin with, as well as, as well as, of course, the issue that this needs, I'm coming back to this, but this needs to be a nonviolent revolution this needs to be not because it's like oh we really want to be violent but we can't but we shouldn't want to be violent i mean that's the whole point right that this anarchy we don't like that coercive violence i i I try to encourage this because i think this needs to shift from becoming a political ideology to becoming a personal and cultural ideology to say i don't like it when my friends are aggressed against i don't do 
cocaine. But when I hear that story in Chicago, my first instinct is also that is not fair. That's his stuff. No one should take his stuff, harm him and lock him in a cage. It doesn't matter that we have all these other differences. And so it needs to become this cultural thing and not just a political situation where I say, well, politically, I don't want to be violent, but personally, I really want to beat everybody's butt. It's like, and I, and I, and there's, and and we need to embrace that because that's how we're, that's the only way we're going to get the unity we're, we require to get this. I mean, heck, we're struggling. Nick, we're struggling with coming up with 150 people here. You know, mm -hmm. for us to even put the pan in panarchy, we're going to need 300, 450, 600. It's got to grow, you know. And so if we're struggling to come up with that 150 magic number that we need to be fully independent, there's still a lot more work even after that. Yeah. And, and it's it's. Yeah, and the more violence you use, the more you encourage the state to use violence, the more you justify the state using violence against you. And it's just not going to work. It needs to be a public movement where we appear to be the innocents and they appear to be the aggressors. Um, this, is how, this is how Martin Luther King Jr. got people on his side. He got racists on his side because they said, well, I don't want to eat lunch next to a black person, but I also don't like it when people sick the dogs on their kids and spray them with fire, fire hoses when they're standing on the side of a of a sidewalk, mm -hmm. you know, and you say, you know, I'm not for integration with black people, but I know I'm against that. And so even if we can't convert everybody to an anarchist, at least we can be the good guys. And they say, Hey, I'm not for anarchists, but I think if somebody wants to collect rainwater, I think if somebody wants to make their own fuel, that should be okay. And I think we are definitely the people to bring that message because that's all we're trying to do is mm -hmm. live our own lives. And I think that's something that is publicly popular. Yeah. And that message goes over very well, at least in the area where I'm from, talking to all kinds of different people. Because you bring up the word anarchists and people instantly think, you know, tipping over trash cans and smashing storefronts. But then when you tell them, nah, man, I just want to grow a garden and collect rainwater, uh, you know, and not be forced to pay for things that I don't use or forced to pay for anything in general, but I'm still going to pay for the things voluntarily that are useful. People are like, oh, that's all it is. Yeah, that's what I do. That's what I want. And it's super easy. You just got to relate. Yeah, I think, um, yeah, very 100% with you. I think there's, I know we're coming up on time here, but I did want to talk about one one thorn in the side of of this whole thing and i'm sure you've got something else too i just didn't want this to get missed in the while we're talking but but there is a time when you do have to say no i'm not going to do business with you even if you call yourself an anarchist yeah um i'm sure you can think of several in instances and we, we're going through some right now where we got to clean house a little bit and I'm not one, I'm a unifier. I like to see as many people in as possible. But the problem is if you get ambiguous about your messaging, you're going to attract some very gross people. So we still need to keep the messaging bold, but we, you know, and I'm, I mean, I don't have to beat around the bush here. I'm talking about murderers, pedophiles, racists. I don't want anything to do with them, right? So we need to make clear right off the bat, if you are one of those things, kill yourself or get help or fix it you know like like there, the problem is and there's there's ways to become not racist if you want to do enough honest research so like just 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 stop but if you can't stop you know you're not welcome here and the and so we have the funny thing is you know we're having trouble getting 150 people together and somehow while we're still on that journey to 150 people that it takes to liberation we managed to get eight pedophiles on the way and it's like what why are you people here? Get, mm -hmm. get the F out, you know? And so I think there is, we still need to say that that is coercive. That is wrong. And you're not welcome to be one of those 150 people. I'm sorry. Yeah, absolutely. It, it brings it back to your personal network. your the network inside yourself and being responsible, being taking responsibility for your actions, all that stuff and cleaning up. Like you said, cleaning house, you got to do it. Uh, only interacting with people who have your shared good ethics and not accepting anything less than that. And if people look at these fringe, gross people that infiltrate uh, groups of anarchists, libertarians, whatever, and they say, see, no rules, that's what you get. But turn that lens around and look at the millions of them, because I'm pretty sure there's millions of those kind of piece of shit people in government. 
it's part of who runs it. And they're willing to associate with anybody if you have the money. So, but yeah, we are coming up on time. Oh, they. Oh, go ahead. Yeah. Oh, they just, I, I just said with government, they just, uh, with, with anarchy, they feel more free to expose themselves for us to be like, eh, no. Yeah. You know, because we're such individualists here, we encourage individualism, you know, just not coercive individualism and evil individualism. You know, we, we still have, come on, guys, like, like, stop it. And if you know these people, you know, it's time to stop association or at least let them know that they need to fix themselves. And, and that's a prerequisite to us doing business with them. But other than that, please unify. Mm-hmm. Um, yeah, yeah, it's nothing yeah. wrong with um, working together. Solutions. Yeah, there's nothing wrong with working together. Find, find solutions. I think when people, I, I, I take issue when people have a problem with you guys selling, selling clothes on Threadless because that's not solutions based. They have nothing else to offer. The only other offer is shirtlessness <laughs> straight up. Right. So like, you know, is to, to never buy a shirt or to, you know, I mean, even if you're taking a hand me down shirt, we'll still got process somewhere else. So, you know, stop being a hypocrite, you know, let people do their best and get the message out there and don't look for reasons unless you have a solution. Look, here's the thing. I want you to get off of, you know, I I guess I don't want to just threadless too much, but get, you know, I want you to have your own, you know, clothing line and be able to manufacture it yourself. And if somebody wants to either pony up the dough or provide a service that makes it within the anarchist community, fantastic. That's what we want. Let us know as a result of this episode, please let me know. Mm -hmm. I don't have a lot of context right now and I'm working on more. So if you're listening to this and I'll just say, this will be my final words here, but if you are offering a service and or or need a service be very vocal about it and ask the community because that's something we're trying to do right now i think that's something that's very unique with the enemy estate pod stash is we are trying to you know i shouldn't say we uh they are trying to expand you know we're trying to grow we're trying to get that community together as opposed to just preach philosophy 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 is great but this needs to become real life at some point you've read enough books you get it. Let's live it. And uh, so, so if you can offer something in that regard, contact me. <laughs> but uh, let us know on the on the comments. Share this with your friends. You know, sign up for the Patreon so more of this word can get out. It's it's very important. But yeah, Nick, I will turn the remaining of the time over to you. Hey, you covered it very well there. Absolutely. Let us know. Let's get the word out there. Um, definitely check out the Patreon and the Bitbacker and. That's what I was thinking too. Like the stuff we sell, like that's that's not why we're here doing it. That that makes the investments that we've put into this uh, a little easier to bear because it's all out of pocket. Uh, you know, the the equipment, the hosting, all that stuff, and it just helps and it's nice. Um, our our main mission is to bring strong voices that are out there together to create more strong voices because community building. That's what we're talking about right now. Community building and networking. Um, Building people up to be a good and essential part of that community. So thanks everybody for hanging out with us on the live stream, in the Discord, um, everywhere. Join us in the Discord. Let us know. Uh, If you are like Hody and Adam Howard, a $5 patron, after our episodes, we do a separate Q&A. It'll be a little weird this time since it'll just be you and I Q and Aing each other, I suppose. <laughs> but uh, and we don't have a guest to Q and A. <laughs> but that's that's a benefit there. If you don't want to be a five dollar uh, supporter, there's a one dollar supporter, and you get into the private uh, stream discords to talk to us while we're recording and uh, be a part of the community there as well. So think about that. Uh, check out the fundraiser that we mentioned at the beginning of the show. It's on the Enemy of the State's Dank Pod Stash Facebook page, my personal page. Hody shared it. It's it's all over the place right now. Message us. Let us know if you can help out uh, Daniel and his family. And remember that this episode was sponsored by Anarcho Coffee at anarchocoffee.com. Thank you so much for sponsoring the episode and helping out once again with the fundraiser and helping to build a strong anarchist, anarchist community. And thank you, Hody, for jumping in as co-host today. I really appreciate it. Always a great time talking with you, man. You too, man. The friendship means a lot to me. David, you get well, buddy. Yep, feel better, bro. And we'll have uh, David back uh, joining me as a moderator for, like you mentioned, your debate with Jack Neeson 
next episode, next Sunday on capitalism versus mutualism. So fellow enemies of the state, build that community, and we'll see you next time.